tonight we're going to be dealing with um, moving past your feelings to what you know. Um, well, yeah, well, how many of us have, you know, sometimes your feelings, what you feel, has caused you to do something that really was against, uh, 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 you know, what you know. It's like, um, why are you laughing? Dude? Oh, okay, all right, yeah, sometimes, you know, how we feel um, can cause us to do something uh, maybe a little un uneducated or unpractical because it actually wasn't something that you sat down and thought about. Mm -hmm. If you have a act of passion, like you come home and your spouse is cheating and you kill a person right then and there, you'll get less time than somebody who actually sat down and premeditatively planned it because you acted out of your feelings, and your feelings caused you to do something that you should not have done. Now, as Christians, we cannot allow our feelings to dictate our actions. Uh, we can't allow the way we feel about things to change what it is that we already know. And from the characteristics of what we know about God, those things should govern our actions, and those things should even govern our feelings. So when we feel a certain way, what we know needs to override how we feel. No matter how we feel about it, no matter how down we feel, no matter if we feel it ain't going to work, no matter if we feel like um, God has left us, we need to know if God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, when you begin to feel like God has left you, you got to sit down and say, like I told you one time, take some deep breaths, but I know. I feel like, I feel like this but I know. And, and when you know something, that, that can take power over how you feel. Because, like, you know, sometimes you be tripping and, and you'll say to yourself, man, I'm, just, oh, I'm, I'm tripping right now. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. I know better than this. I need to just get it together. Because we understand when we really think about it rationally that our feelings can lead us any which way. And, and when they do that, you know, we're like a double-minded man. Now, I was reading up on, on, on feelings on a, a book called The Psychology of Emotions. Feelings and Thoughts by Mark Pettinelli. And an excerpt I, I, I took out of this, he says, some things in life cause people to feel. These are called emotional reactions. Some things in life cause people to think. These are called logical or intellectual reactions. Thus, life is divided between things that make you feel and things that make you think. The question is, if someone is feeling, does that mean they are thinking less? It probably does. If part of your brain is being occupied by feeling, then it makes sense that you have less capacity for thought. That is obvious if you take emotional extremes such as crying, where people can barely think at all. If it's somebody crying, it's like, I can't even think. I can't even think right now. Like after somebody die, you can't think straight because of the emotion that's causing you to cry. Now, this is, this is Mark Pitanelli, so don't start cussing me out, y'all, because if y'all have some kind of feelings. This does not mean that emotional people are not intelligent. It just means that they might be dumber during the times in which they are emotional. You <laughs> the word dumber. I don't know why this professional man used the word dumber. dumber? Wow. He, dumber. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he really did. He, he really He's said dumber. Right. <laughs> why, he, wow. why he chose to use that word, I don't know. But it's the truth. Well, dumb is a word, but it, it kind of makes you feel some kind of way. Like, all right, if I act on my feelings, you call me dumb. Like, you know, I think you could use a better word, choice. Mm -hmm. But we we have to understand it's the truth. You can't get mad at the word he used because it's real. And and, and what that really shows us is if this is what I'm gonna say this to myself, if I allow my feelings to cause me to act, I'm acting dumb. Because I'm not sitting down and thinking over the totality of what's going on. I'm just acting off an impulse. And if you act off an impulse, it'll be, if everybody did that, it's going to be a whole lot of dead people in this world. Because every time you get mad, you would just harm somebody. You would kill them. You would choke them. You would do all kinds of things because that's what your feelings need you to do. But as Christians, we cannot allow our feelings because the enemy will play on our feelings. The enemy will always dangle things in front of you. When he tempted Jesus, he was leaning on his feelings. He was leaning on what he felt. I know you feel hungry. So turn a rocks in there. I know you, I know, I know you feel it. You feel them hunger pains. You feel like you should eat. So the enemy will try to use our feelings because if we feel like it, then we'll end up doing it. And sometimes 
people do some crazy stuff and you'll ask them why, and they'll say, because I felt like it. <laughs> Just because they felt like it. So that feeling drove them to do something. But we got to understand, the feelings for the most part are attached to things that don't even exist. Mm -hmm. Like stress. Most of the things we stress about never even happen. But the feeling of stress was real. You really had that feeling, but when you look deeply into it, it's not attached to anything. So now, what was the purpose of allowing that feeling to have you depressed or have you stay in the house or have you act in a certain kind of way because you have a feeling of stress that when you look back six months down the line, a year from now, when you look at it, that feeling was not attached to anything because what you thought was going to happen ain't even happened. So we got to, when we start to begin to have these feelings or, you know, whatever it is that's making us mad or depressed or making us not trust God or, or making us not believe his word or making us um, doubt our calling or making us doubt our power or our anointing. When we start to have these feelings, we got to get in God's word to, to, to connect ourselves with what we, what we know. I don't really like hymns, but one of the hymns uh, or old songs that they sing, you know, just makes so much sense. It says, you can't make me doubt him, which is a feeling, because I know too much about him. And, and that is just, that's, that's just this whole class in a nutshell. You can't make me doubt. You can't make me live my life according to this feeling because of what I know. So once we know certain things about God, whatever feeling that we have that contradicts what we know, we got to squash that feeling. And that's really what it talks about bringing every high thing down. Our feelings sometimes become a high thing in our life, which needs to be brought down to the captivity of the obedience of Christ, which is the word. So now when we have the word, the word is the truth. So now every feeling that we have needs to go through the word before it can become an action. Uh, you know, we all probably saw a cop show. Somebody gets murdered. Detective comes to the scene. You know, so a cop should thing. Okay. <laughs> no, I had to do it for a fact. You never see law and order. No, no, no. <laughs> cop comes. Cop comes to the murder scene. Cop gets to the murder scene. Cop looks around, looks at some stuff. The detective got a feeling about who did it. This detective cannot go arrest anybody according to what he feels. They cannot put out a warrant. For the person that he wants locked up for this crime over what he feels. And they cannot have a trial at all based on what this detective feels because his feeling means nothing. So now what the detective has to do is he has to go do an investigation. And he has to go get facts and he has to go get evidence. And he has to build up enough evidence and facts in order to prove that his feeling was true before he can act on it. And now if he goes through all of this and none of the facts line up, his feeling has to get tossed up. And now he can't keep trying to arrest this person when the guy has a credible alibi, he on camera, and then he's eating. <laughs> I don't know. That just came to my head just now. <laughs> so now he looks at the evidence, and the evidence says this man or this woman was not there. They didn't do it. Now I gotta move on. And that's how we gotta be. When we start having these feelings in our life that ain't right, we gotta be just like a detective. We gotta pile up the facts and we gotta pile up the evidence. And if the evidence contradicts the feelings that we have, we have to throw those feelings out. And we can't allow them feelings to arrest us anymore. We can't be running around feeling like God don't love us if he already gave his only begotten son. If, Forget he gave his only begotten son because sometimes that doesn't even sound uh, uh, graphic enough. God put himself in a human form as a son and felt our pain for us. Because so sometimes that, it kind of sounds like God is, was just in heaven watching his son get crucified. No, that's not really what it was. He was in the form of a son. And he got hung on the cross for us. What more love is there? I just watched Passion the Christ for the first time then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Oh. When they finally showed what scourging was, oh my God. And he went through all that for us. So now, I feel like, all right, something bad happened in my life. God must don't love me. I feel like God doesn't love me. I feel like God doesn't care. All right, now we got to go to the evidence. 
What is the evidence? What does the evidence say about the love of God? And we can go through his word and we can go through our entire life and realize that God has proven himself to love us over and over again. Therefore, we got to move past that feeling to what we know. We can't allow that feeling to have us stuck in any situation or state in life, have us stuck in any kind of depression or have us stuck in a pride or, or whatever this feeling might lead you. You can't allow any of these feelings to cause you to act differently than what you know. So we gotta we gotta get in God's word. We gotta know who God is so we can move past our feelings to what it is uh, that we know. Uh, let's turn to 1 John 3. I actually want to read this in the, the New Living Translation. If anybody wants to buy me a little New Living Translation, I would appreciate that a whole lot. I don't need a big one. I just need a little one. You know, that would be awesome. That would really be awesome. <laughs> First John 3.20. And the, the New Living, well, I'll, I'll read it in the King James, and then we'll read it in the New Living. Mm. Um, and the, in the King James, it reads, For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. D, I heard you go, mm, go ahead and read. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings, and he knows everything. Even if we feel, it's 1 John 3.20. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. Because he what? Knows. He knows everything. Now, what's going on here in this, in, in this chapter uh, it's, the chapter so far is talking about, you know, loving your neighbor, and that's showing that, you know, you are a actual Christian by showing, you know, love to your brother and um, giving and giving to one another. But, you know, what, what he's talking about in this verse is somebody like my sister here. My sister bends over for anybody. She's a giver, and she still sometimes feels like it ain't enough. And sometimes she still feels like I... I just feel like I need to be doing more. God is greater than your feeling because he knows everything. So now when we come to a place where, you know, we're doing the will of God, we're doing the work of God, but we feel like we're not doing enough, God knows. God is greater than our feelings. So just because you feel like you ain't doing enough don't mean you're not doing enough because God don't want us um, acting according to our feelings anyway. That's just the devil playing a trick on your mind. Because now, if he gets you to feel like you ain't doing nothing, now you want to step outside of what you do to try to do something that seems more grand. You want to try to do something extra and begin to neglect the purpose that you have in your life all because of a feeling. Amen. So we got to know. If I know what God has called me to do, and if I know if she's a giver, I'm a, I'm a giver also. I, I give. If God tells me to give, I give. When, God, when I don't get no conviction from the Holy Spirit, I ain't giving you nothing. <laughs> and I'm not going to feel bad about it. If I walk by somebody that's begging, I get the feeling in me that God will say give. I will give them whatever he asked me to give. One day God told uh, tell me, get this, I only had like $30. <laughs> I only had like $30 to my name. I'm like, $30 to my name. I'm on the way to work. Man, sell the papers. Give them a time. <laughs> <laughs> Learned a long time ago, just listen to God. So I just did it. Went on, I have a miraculous story. I got my money back that same day, like another time I gave. But I just, I just listened to God. Now, I probably wrote by that guy a hundred times. Oh, I didn't feel bad. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't feel bad because I know, first of all, I don't have enough to give to everybody. So I can't allow the enemy to be in my mind making me feel bad that I didn't give to somebody in need every time they needed it because I just can't. It's impossible for me to give to everybody I see that needs. So I gotta know that I'm not committing a sin. I am not being less of a Christian. I am not being less compassionate because I'm not giving to this person because I just can't. And because I know that, I don't have this feeling of guilt when I walk by and they're saying, oh, well, the Lord would like you to bless me. Yes, the Lord would. And I, and I would like for the Lord to bless me right now. Also. <laughs> <laughs> to God be the glory. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I am. <laughs> you can come the Thursday night, true. I will teach Bible study to, the, to you die. 
teach all night long till they turn the lights out if you want. I give you what I got. Now. I got some knowledge of the word. I give you what I got. I got no money. Got no money. It's a word for <laughs> they, but they try to play on you. That's where, especially when you, if you don't tell with a suit on, oh my God, they just, they just think you feel good. Listen, man, I'm front. I'm front. I'm front. I'm front. I'm front. I'm front. Looking like it, walking like it, head up high, but man, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, God is greater than our feelings. And because he's greater than our feelings, that's what we gotta connect to. We gotta connect, we gotta, we gotta connect to that because he knows. So if he knows, we gotta connect to the know and not to the feel. I, I mean, I wanted to, I had a list of feelings by now, this needle, but I was looking at all these different types of feelings and all these different types of emotions. And when I was looking at when I was reading them, I was trying to figure out, all right, if I if I adhere to these things, what good is gonna come from? No matter what the emotion is, even love, man, people doing dumb, dumb things because you allow your love to control your actions. And that's what we can't do. We've got to move past what we feel to what we know. I'll turn to Ephesians chapter 4. That better be Jesus. <laughs> Verse 17, and you got a good Bible. My caption says, <laughs> A new way of thinking. Mine says, Living as children alike. Oh, well, y'all ain't got a good Bible. No, that's the same thing. <laughs> this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Having the, under, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, in the vanity of their thinking, having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. The heart always is signifying your feelings. That's where you feel it. You feel it, you feel it, you feel it in your heart. Now, they were, their mind, the way they thought was darkened because they were led by the blindness of what they felt. And because they allow what they felt to control them, they began to be alienated from the life of God. Alienated from the life of God. So now, if everything that we do in life pertains to our feelings, it's going to alienate us from God. It's going to leave us, because God is his word. God is truth. This is, this is who he is. And this, is, this is God in a nutshell, at least for our finite minds. Anything outside of this, our feelings are here, the truth is here. If you live your whole life according to your feelings, you ain't nowhere near God. Because your feelings don't have nothing to do with truth. Feelings, intuition, what is woman's intuition, that ain't got nothing to do with truth. What is that, dudes? Come on, man. You trust the woman's intuition. I'm not even going to go into it right now. I'm not even going to go into it right now. They've been trying to kill me for years. Well, these people, he says, don't live like this. That's what he says. Walk not like the other Gentiles who allowed their feelings to control their mind. And when they did that, it led them away from God because it's not God who's using your feelings. God don't play with your feelings. God is blunt. God won't tell you just how it is, and that's just that's, that's that. I ain't going to talk to you about how you feel or none of that. Listen, all right, I understand. You got some issues right now, but all things were together for your good. Boom. That's it. Bottom line. Trust me. Move on. God ain't, he's not going to dangle and mess with your feelings. That's the enemy using your feelings because he knows if he can get you to feel a certain way, he can get you to do a certain thing. If he can get you to just look at this fruit that's on this tree and see that it's pleasant to the eyes, for you to feel like you want this fruit, I can get you to disobey God. 
So now the tr the fruit, the Bible says that it was it was it was it was good to look at. Like ooh, it look it looked good. So he got them to feel a certain way about it to disregard what they knew, because God already says, "Do not eat of the fruit of the tree of good knowledge." This is what you know. God told me, "Don't do it." The devil cracked it and made them feel like they needed it. And that's what he would do to you and I. He will creep in and make us feel as if we have to do something, feel as if we need something, feel as if we got to have something, feel as if we can't live without something, feel as if we need to be a certain place. And when we feel like that, now he can play with our whole lives because I feel like I need this. I was just talking to a friend of mine who was, you know, who was in jail, and he just he was like, man, let's not just need that. I was talking to Cook. He said, man, I, all right, listen, I can talk to you, man, because I, I, I see you change in my own eyes, man. What was, you know, the turning point? Like, you know, what made you, you know, really just go? And I said, listen, I realized that my mind was gone, and I realized that I was, I had a void. But the devil kept making me think that my void was something else, because my void was God. That was the void that was in my life. But the devil made me feel like my void was power. The devil made me feel like my void was money. My void was women. My void was jewelry and cars. So now I'm chasing this stuff like crazy. And I get it all. And now I want a newer car, a newer chain, a, a younger, prettier girl. <laughs> I'm just being honest with y'all. So, so now... Now I get that. I'm the one. If I got a 2013 14 come, oh, I need a new car. Yeah. I'm never going to be able to fulfill this void that I have because the void is actually God, but the devil will make you feel like that void is something else. And as long as he has you feeling, he has you doing. Yeah. As long as he got you feeling, he got you doing whatever it is he wants. I got you. I got you. And he's going he to play with us. He's going to play with us. So now, to tell us something that, uh, in, in verse 19, who being, watch this, past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. They done, it done became past just feeling. It became you. The enemy crept in and turned your feelings into the essence of who you are. So now, they turn themselves over to lasciviousness and to work all uncleanness with what? Greediness. This is, this is, this is me. He's talking about me. This is, this is where I was at. With all greediness, I just need more. And I talk about, um, you know, on Wall Street all the time, you know, when he asked me how much money you need to quit, and the guy just was like, more. What? You a multi-billionaire, yet you're still doing crooked stuff to make more. What you gonna do with 15 billion that you can't do with five? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not it's not the money, it's the feeling. You know, it's the feeling. A lot of us feel like, you know, listen, if I just get one billion, I don't, I'm quitting. I don't, I'm not getting up and going to work every every morning to run this company. We're not gonna be somewhere on the beach, somewhere chilling. But it's the desire for more. It's the feeling that I need to be the head of this company. I need. I, I had a boss one time who just felt like he just he just needed to be in control. So he would try to get us to do stuff that had no reason, just to control us. The store didn't open up until six thirty. He wanted us there. He started wanting us there. He was like, "I want y'all to come in at six. Be like, "Why? It's no prepping." <laughs> There's no like, it ain't like a place where you gotta go in and get everything prepared before people come. No, if we get there at 6.30 and open the doors, everything, we prep, we, we stopped there the night before, we cool. Mm -hmm. So now he wants to come in at 6 and just sit around till 6.30 just because he could. Mm -hmm. The power. Mm -hmm. this, this, this is the power. And he's a very rich guy. He don't need to be, and he'll be at the place all day, every day. We used to be like, yo, why don't you just go on vacation or something? <laughs> but it became who he was. Mm -hmm. This power is who I am. And I have power here, and I don't want to leave my power. I don't want to go enjoy life because I feel like I need this power. So we, we got to get past what we feel. Uh, verse 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him, you heard him, you understand him, and have been taught by him 
as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him and know him as the truth, now you can put on a new mind. What's this new mind? The new mind that only works according to the word and not my feelings. Now that you have heard Christ, you know him and you know he is the truth. Now your feeling means nothing. Because now you know exactly what the truth is. And I always say something about when people, you know, feel like, you know, God doesn't love them because somebody died. Mm -hmm. And, or, you know, God doesn't love them or God doesn't exist. I would say that if, the, if, well, I'm sorry. Listen, <laughs> you know, I always get right with that. I said, listen, if when your parent died, that didn't change, two plus two is four, how does it change if God exists? Truth is truth. I don't care what happened to you. It don't change what the truth is. Now, if when your mom died or your dad died, two plus two is equal six, God don't exist no more than two if, if we're going to do that. But truth is not going to change. So now that you have heard him and you know him and you know that he is the truth, truth don't change. Even facts change. That's why Jesus never said, I'm a fact. He said, I'm the truth. Truth don't change. Facts change. At some point in life, they will say, this is this. And then later on, they'll say, Pluto is not really a planet. At one time, that was a fact. The truth is, God knows whether it's a planet or not. I don't know. But truth never changes. So now, if truth never changes, i got to line up to what don't change. I can't line up to what sways. How I feel about something, you can feel totally differently about. And we can do totally different things with it. We can't do that with the truth. What the truth is, we got to adhere to the truth the same way. So how can we allow something that's different according to everybody to rule us? It's no standard to feelings. It's, it's nothing. It's just something that's inside of us that we need to conquer. Verse 24, and that he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. And verse 26 really sums this up right here. Be ye angry and sin not. Be ye angry and sin not. What does he say here? Go ahead and feel angry, but don't let it make you do nothing. I understand a feeling is going to arise in your life for anger, and this anger might make you want to kill somebody. Have your feeling, but don't let your feeling cause you to do nothing. Don't let your feeling cause you to react. Don't let your feeling cause you to move into a different realm of your life, something that's completely out of character, because a lot of times your feelings will make you do something that contradicts who you are. There's people in jail for murder today who ain't really murderers. They killed somebody, but they're not really murderers. Their feelings made them do something outside of who they are. Be angry. Go ahead. God, see, God's never going to tell us to not have, to not have feelings, but he's going to say, don't let your feelings control you. Let my word direct you. Your, his word is a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet, not our feelings. But so often we get to our feelings and we just get stuck. And we can't move anywhere else and we can't do nothing else unless... It feels good. And a lot of the things that God will want us to do ain't going to make us feel good. Right. When you get in the Old Testament and read, even in the New Testament, you know, some of the things like, you know, God told Paul, you know, not to marry. You just be celibate your whole life, bro. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I know that ain't feel good to Paul to say I'm never going to have a companion. 
I'm never going to have a wife, but he had to adhere to what God said. This is what God says do. So sometimes God is going to ordain us to do some things that we might not feel like doing. And then some people might say, well, why would God call me to do something that I don't feel like doing? Because if you still were in the state that you were supposed to be when he created you, you would have felt like it then. But now the world has, uh, has gotten to our mind and made us feel like we need to be doing, again, the word, made us feel like we need to be doing certain things in our life and having certain things that now when God brings your original purpose to you, you're like, I don't like this. And God's like, how? Ah, this is what you were created to do. How can you tell me you don't like it? No, you just, your mind is just so clouded with so much stuff from this world that the enemy has just poured into you that you can't even receive what it is that's for you. I created you for this specific purpose, and now you don't allow things to cloud that. Because these feelings, trust in God don't have nothing to do with feeling. It has all to do with what you know. God knows you ain't going to feel like when it, all hope is gone. That, or not when all hope is gone, or when it, when, when it looks like this thing ain't going to work. He know you ain't going to feel like trusting him, but you got to know that you have to. And that's why I said again I how I love the, um, the Bible series when it really showed these expressions of these people who trusted God and had faith in God. Because I, I don't know how y'all look at it, but in my mind, you know, the three Hebrew boys just was like, throw me in a fire, I don't care. You know, that's what I saw. And Abraham just was like, Isaac, I'm just going to kill you, I don't care. But then the show, it just made, it showed them really had feelings. Like, ah, I don't... Ah. I don't know about this fire situation here. <laughs> I don't know. But, but I'm going to trust God. My feelings make me feel a certain way, but I know God got me. Yeah. So sometimes our feelings is, is, is going to have a hold on us, but what we know. When God commands us to love, that ain't got nothing to do with your feelings. Jesus says, love your enemy and pray for those that persecute you. And when it says persecute, you're about people who are attacking you, people who are wanting to harm you, sometimes people that are wanting to take your life, uh, people who are speaking evilly against you. He says pray for these people, and he know good and well you ain't going to feel like <laughs> nothing that these people are doing to me is going to make me want to pray for them. I'm never going to feel like it, but nevertheless at thy word. What you know is Jesus said it, that settles it. That's the end of it. So now it's, it's not according to how we feel. Love, the, the, the love that God talks about is not the love that we know. Mm -hmm. That's why when God talks about his love towards us, it's, it's agape. He don't talk about the erroneous love that, 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 you know, that we have for people or the Philadelphia love. Actually, the real Greek word. <laughs> no, I didn't make that up yet. A certain love is but it's a brotherly love. That's why they call us a certain brotherly love. Yeah, like if you read it in Greek, you just be like, yeah, fill up with you. <laughs> Sounds weird. But um, that's what it is. So now where was I at before I got shot? My sister might not believe me. <laughs> she always questions me. My sister. Oh, God. The love of God. God. Okay, this is where we at. The love that God is talking about is action. For God so loved the world. He gave. He's not talking about, I just, I want you to feel warm and fuzzy for these people. How? <laughs> How would God ever expect you to feel like that? Oh my God, just get butterflies. Think about people that persecute me. You, you got to be out your mind. You got to be crazy if you're going to feel like that. Well, God told me to just love them. Oh, I just love you. <laughs> you with a rock. I just love you. No, but he told them, he said, listen, pray for them because if they have peace, they might leave you alone. I need you to act according to how I'm saying because this can help you. I just need my love to be shown. So even when they persecute you, I need you to still show love to them because that shows who I am. And you are my ambassador. You are my servant. You are on an assignment for me. You are working for me on this earth. So this is what I tell you to do. You just do it. We don't feel like doing everything our boss told us to do. Oh, but we do that, don't we? And we, and we, we bottle that film 
coming up there. You want me to <laughs> Man, you don't feel like it, but you know you got to do it. You know if you don't do it, they're going to fire you, they're going to write you up, they're going to suspend you. You, want, you know overrides how you feel at that moment. Why don't we not give God that same reference? To never ever feel like God doesn't love us again. Mm -hmm. To never ever feel like God has left us again. To never ever feel that what God has purpose for us to do that we can't do. I've been stuck on this stuff so long. Oh, man. I want to get to a couple other verses. Um, let's go to Luke chapter 15. I'm trying to get these last couple verses. <clears throat> Luke 15, verse 21. Verse 1. And the son said unto him, this is the story of the prodigal son, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to the servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatty calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead. The son said, I am no more worthy to be called thy son. The father says, this my son was dead. So at this moment, the son felt like he was unworthy to even be called son. But the father said, this my son. You, how you feel, son, ain't never going to change that you my son. I don't care. I know you messed with everything I gave you. You went and act crazy and all that. I, I'm not the kind of father that's just going to disown you, and God ain't going to disown us. So he says, listen here, you are still my son no matter how you feel. And just because we might feel unworthy or feel whatever it is, but the truth of God is always going to stand. And the truth is, I, birth you, well, I didn't birth you, but I, I caused you to be born. You were born, you know, from me. You know, you are, you are, you are, you have my DNA. You are from my genetic makeup. That ain't never going to change. I don't care how much you mess up in life. That's not going to change that you're not my son. How do you get to the point where you feel like you did something so bad that your, 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 your parental, uh, your father, well, I can't get the word that I'm trying to get. Paternal. Your paternal, I don't know. Can't get the word. I can't get the word. Yeah, your father, your real father. I can't even get it out. I, I, I hate when I can't. I hate when I can't get the word out of my mouth. I'm gonna get it. Try to be crazy. Biological. Yo, that was my. That's what y'all are. Y'all here to help. Y'all here to help. So now, how can you feel like you did something so bad that your biological father ain't your biological father no more? How is that going to contradict the truth of when you were conceived, you came from this man, but you feel like you did something so bad that that overrides the truth? How? How, how does that override the truth? Let's turn to Luke 22. Uh, Luke 22, 42, very familiar. Uh, Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. Uh, verse 42 says, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Oh, we know Jesus ain't feel like going to the cross. <laughs> he did not feel like going to the cross. Nowhere in any part of his being, the Bible says he went and prayed three times, and they were a long period of time, so long that every time he prayed, all of his like was fell asleep. So he was praying, because he did not feel like going through this. But nevertheless, I know I was sent here for this purpose. And God, I'm going to talk to you about how I feel, but I'm not going to let how I feel stop what I got to do. I'm not going to let how I feel keep me off that cross because this is what I was created for and we can never allow how we feel. It's okay to feel that way. Jesus felt it. We can feel it. God does feel like it's too rough. But it, I know you're going to put only more than I can bear without a way of escape. It's going to be a way for me to deal with this thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and live in it. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to do whatever it is that you call me to do because if you purpose me for it, you want to provide a way for me to get through this thing. So what I feel, is, it means nothing. Now let's turn to uh, Exodus chapter 4. Uh, Exodus chapter 4, verse 
Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither hitherto for, uh, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. That word just tore me up. <laughs> but I am slow of speech, or he stutters, and I'm a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who waketh the dumb, or deaf, or seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? So God tells Moses, I need you to go speak to these people. Moses didn't feel like he was able. How, how, how can you let how you feel control what God said you can do? And God said, who made your mouth? If you know God created you, and if you know God told you to do this, if you feel like you can't, God to get squashed. Because God, he knows more than what you know. I, I'm not seeing people in the gym when I used to work out. <laughs> So, you know, they look at a certain amount of weight and they feel like they can't lift it, and then they get under like, all oh, this ain't even that heavy. Because what you felt has nothing to do with what the truth is. And if God says to you, listen, I'm calling you to do this, I don't care how grand it seems, I don't care if it seems impossible. God knows. He created you, and when He put in you, yeah, they're going to be able to do this. So, look, it's a little wow, I just did that. <laughs> I had the creation of my head. <laughs> she laughed, she laughed. She was laughing at the whole plan. I was like, this guy is crazy. <laughs> so, so, so our feeling, if we feel like we can't accomplish it, then uh, uh, we got to realize that God told us. The one more, we're out of here. Matthew chapter 16, I think I go to this pretty often. Matthew 16, 21 through 23. And this is Craziness, but we get like this. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. From that day, Jesus himself was telling him this. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. For real. <laughs> Real Peter, Peter. <laughs> saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Jesus himself is telling him, This is what's getting ready to happen. And he rebuked Jesus. <laughs> and then Jesus rebuked him and said, Get me behind him, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Peter had a great feeling going on here. <laughs> He felt like I ain't going to let nothing happen to my Lord. He felt like I ain't going to let nobody come in here and grab you. I'm, I'm, listen, the way he felt, he had such a good feeling because he was loyal. Uh, he, was, he was willing to lay down his life. He wanted to go to war. And when we saw it, when they came to grab Jesus, he pulled a sword out and cut yeah. some of ear off. Oh, his feeling, his loyalty was good, but it was against the word of God. Even if, you, even if what you feel like seems good, if it ain't going according to the word of God, it's not good. How you gonna, Listen, Peter, I, I, I got to go to Jerusalem. I got to die. And I got to rise again. No, you don't. How? How? <laughs> how, 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 do you, how do you feel like you can tell me this? How does God, how do we feel like we can tell God that when God is giving us a plan, when God is telling us something, and we saying, be it far from thee, God, this ain't going to happen. And sometimes what we feel, it's like, you know, it's actually good. But if it's not the will of God, mm -hmm. it's not good. Mm -hmm. Everything that's worldly good is not godly or spiritually good. Because sometimes what God has planned for you, the world don't have planned for you. And, 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 and we can get so caught up in what the world seems to be good that we don't do what it is that God 